How is China responding to the U.S. election? You won't believe who's criticizing U.S. human rights. And a journey to the center of the earth. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Confused about the U.S. election? Don't worry, you're not alone. The Chinese Communist Party is also really confused. While many world leaders have congratulated Joe Biden on becoming president-elect, the trifecta of world strongmen have not. Xi Jinping, along with Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un, have not acknowledged Joe Biden. Actually, I'm not sure if the Supreme Leader of North Korea has ever congratulated a U.S. president on winning. But why haven't they? It could be the ongoing accusations of voter fraud being made by the Trump campaign. After all, these guys probably have more experience with rigged elections than a free democratic process. Okay, technically only one of them has to even bother with rigging elections. The point is, the official response from the Chinese Communist Party has been incredibly muted. Chinese authorities feign indifference. China's foreign ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin said on Wednesday that the U.S. election is a domestic affair. China has no position on it. Chinese media staff told Radio Free Asia that they have received notice from the authorities, asking them to follow state media sources. The notice also warned them not to translate foreign media coverage without official approval and not to inflame excessive emotions and prevent public opinion from becoming heated and sidetracked. Hey, let's not focus too much on elections in case people in China start getting ideas. However, certain Chinese state-run media have been more vocal, especially in English. My favorite state-run media, The Global Times, called President-elect Biden an old friend for the Chinese. State-run China Daily said under Biden, U.S.-China relations can be reset for the better. I wonder from whose perspective it would be better. The Legal Daily, a newspaper run by China's internal security forces, declared Biden the winner, saying the world can be a little bit relieved because we won't have the over two-month election dispute like Bush v. Gore in 2000. I have never in my life wanted to believe Chinese state-run media was right until this very moment. So the Chinese Communist Party and state-run media may have different takes. The Chinese people themselves also have their own takes. There are two opposing views among Chinese people. Fanatic nationalists, such as the Little Pinks, the pro-CC youth, are very much afraid that Trump will be re-elected. Those who oppose the CCP are just the opposite. For them, living under the CCP's rule is a big tragedy. They hope that President Trump will be elected for a second term so that he can continue to be tough on the CCP. They even hope that President Trump can put an end to the CCP. Trump is no fan of communism. November 7th was the national day for the victims of communism. And despite, you know, having other things to worry about, Trump issued a statement. He said, while Marxism promises equality, peace, and happiness, in practice, it only results in inequality, violence, and despair. As proud Americans who cherish the blessings of freedom and democracy, we promise to support the more than one billion people currently captive within communist regimes and deny their unalienable rights to life and liberty. Okay, so... In today's episode, I've agreed with both Chinese state-run media and Donald Trump. Oh, 2020, what surprises will you bring next? Republican Senator Chuck Grassley is taking aim at Joe Biden's son, Hunter. He wrote to the Department of Justice saying the Biden family's close dealings with state-linked Chinese companies and individuals is a major problem. The actions by Hunter Biden and James Biden on behalf of CEFC, a state-linked energy company, its founder, Ye Jianming, and other officers connected to CEFC potentially make them agents of the Chinese government for purposes of long-standing public disclosure laws. Basically, this is what that would mean. According to the Foreign Agents Registration Act of 1938, agents of foreign governments and entities who are engaged in political activities or other activities on behalf of the foreign entity 
must disclose their relationship and the details of the activities. Though I think whether or not that flies will depend a lot on who the next president is. If you'd like to know more about Hunter Biden's business dealings with China, check out the America Uncovered episode, Hunter Biden, How the Media Screwed It Up. And after the break, Chinese tech stocks are going wild in a bad way. Welcome back. Huawei, the Chinese telecom company that's totally private and has no connection to the Chinese state, is selling its phone unit to the Shenzhen government. A big reason for this is U.S. sanctions on Huawei. The U.S. has banned the sale of U.S.-made equipment to Huawei, so Huawei is struggling with production. And judging by the sale, it seems like Huawei executives are assuming the U.S. stance on Huawei won't change anytime soon. Now, last week I told you about how the Chinese Communist Party basically blew up Ant Financial's initial public offering after former founder Jack Ma mouthed off about Chinese regulators. Well, that decision has wiped out $250 billion of Chinese tech stock value. Basically, everyone is panicking there's going to be a huge crackdown on China's tech industry. On Tuesday, the State Administration for Market Regulations, China's top market regulator, outlined guidelines it says are intended to prevent internet monopolies. It's still in the draft stage, so they're encouraging the public to give their opinion. Nice try, Chinese regulators. After 70 years of communist rule, the Chinese public knows that they should never, ever give their public opinion. The United Nations Human Rights Council met this week, and human rights champions Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, and North Korea condemned the United States for its human rights violations. China urged politicians to respect people's rights to life and health, and stop politicizing and stigmatizing COVID-19, and to combat the increasingly severe religious intolerance and xenophobic violence. Now, I was really encouraged to hear this. I had always feared that if we reached a certain threshold of irony, the Earth would actually implode. But it turns out that's not the case. By the way, Taiwan was once again rejected from a meeting with the UN-backed World Health Organization, because China. More in the ongoing saga of China making the world a healthier place, Brazil's health regulator has suspended Chinese-made coronavirus vaccine trials. Oh, what could be so bad? It cited an adverse, serious event, according to a statement it posted on its website Monday night. Uh, that doesn't sound great. But to be fair, Western pharmaceutical companies have also previously paused their coronavirus vaccine trials because of adverse events. The Chinese vaccine is called the Coronavac shot. It's made by Sinovac, one of the companies I talk about in this episode about how the Chinese regime is cutting corners to win the vaccine race. What's more worrying about the situation is that Sinovac has already injected lots of people with their vaccine, even though it's still going through trials. In fact, Sinovac has already injected 90% of its employees and their family members with this vaccine. The good news is that the vaccine trial has been allowed to restart. To me, the best way to deal with the CCP virus is to stay away from the CCP. But Pfizer says it might have its own CCP virus vaccine now. More after the break. Welcome back. U.S. pharmaceutical company Pfizer says it might have a CCP virus vaccine. Amazing news. But I wonder why the CEO then decided to sell a bunch of stock after the announcement. Maybe it had to do with this. The U.S. government is looking into Pfizer's operations in China. Now, technically, what happened is that over the summer, the Justice Department and SEC made an informal request to see Pfizer's documents related to China but it could uncover something not so good. The Foreign Corrupt Practices Act makes it illegal for a U.S. company to bribe foreign government officials. I'm not saying Pfizer is doing that in China. That being said, back in 2012, Pfizer had to pay $26 million to the top U.S. securities regulator as part of a settlement with the U.S. government following a probe into its use of illegal payments to win business overseas including Russia, Bulgaria, China, and Italy.
but I'm sure massive pharmaceutical companies and the Chinese Communist Party aren't getting up to anything suspicious, so don't worry. And big news, China has reached an all-new low. That's right, China has broken their record for the deepest man dive in the Mariana Trench. Now this wasn't the deepest man dive in the Mariana Trench, but it was China's deepest. They managed to go almost 36,000 feet below sea level, so they broke their own record. The world record is held by an American, who made it a few hundred feet further down. This is obviously part of the race between the U.S. and China for who can reach the mole people at the center of the Earth first. The joke's on you, China, because America has claimed the mole people since ancient times, thanks to our sixth president, John Quincy Adams. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Arpanet at CERN asks, Hey Chris, are those papers that you play with on your desk just blank props, or is something actually written on them? Oh, these? These papers contain a vast array of uncensored secrets that I've been disclosing throughout the past eight years and stretch far into the future. But it's written in an ink only I can decipher with a specially designed contact lens. I do that to prevent Shelley from stealing the papers and taking over the show. She'd use the power for evil, just saying. Thanks for your question, Arpanet. If you'd like me to answer your question on the show, join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. Join me in the fight against the Chinese Communist Party. For as little as the price of a cup of coffee, you can help us keep this show going. Go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Well, again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.